My name is Taina and this is Alan and in this channel we talk about how to lead a more sustainable life for ourselves and for our planet. And in this video we're going to talk about the 22 things that we learned in 2022 in this path towards a more sustainable living. Uh, this is going to be a bit more of a blog style video uh, so if you are interested in going more to the core of the issues check out our other videos and subscribe. Um, yeah. Let's uh, start. Uh, so we have divided this video because it's 22 different things that we learned or discovered last year. We've divided it into, into five sections, which are health, mindfulness, adventure, career and self-development. Uh, so let's jump right into it. Yes, and we're going to do this uh, as a little bit of a trivia. Can we say like this? Like we have one minute for each thing, just a few things that we can go a little bit over. So we might be looking down just to check the time. It's almost like a game. Okay, we're gonna go to the first thing. Da -da -da. So we became vegans this year and this is something that we have wanted to become for a long time. Uh, I became a vegetarian at age five or six after seeing, uh, after fishing trips, seeing where meat really comes from. Uh, and then since then, most of our animal rights issues wanted to take the step of becoming a vegan. Yes. However, I did think that this was way too much work and would be a radical change of my life. So. Yeah. And I love cheese. So uh, for me, this was actually an obstacle. How am I going to stop loving cheese? How am I, is it going to be too hard? But then we went to this doctor who works with Ayurveda medicine, Dr. Mateus in Brazil from Vida Veda. And he suggested that we should read a book called uh, How Not to Die mm -hmm. from Dr. Greger. It's just a fantastic book. I love the title in Portuguese. It, it would be translated literally to eating in order not to die. And this version in Portuguese of the title really shows what he talks about. He talks about nutrition and he talks about the diseases that kill the most in the US and connects it to, the, to nutrition, as well as present 12 food products that we should eat every day in a certain proportion. He even has a free app that's mm -hmm. really useful whether you take the time to read the whole book, it's quite extensive or not. We read the book and then we decided to actually enter into this experiment of being vegans for, for some months in the beginning, I think it was like three months, together with my mother who was also doing the same uh, experiment. And it was fantastic both in terms of health, but for me mostly, because I was being very coherent with my inner beliefs, with my discourse and with the way that I feel and think about the world and making our actions coherent and consistent with the things that we stand for with our principles. That is something that I have no words to, to describe. So I was extremely happy. And this um, new starting to investigate a bit more how this impacts the health, how this is greatly positive to the health, sparked an interest in saying, okay, we did this now, what else can we do in order to improve our health? Uh, so we started reading other books as well. And one thing that came from one of those books, which are also highly recommended, which is called Lifespan by David Sinclair, mm -hmm. who is a renowned Harvard, re Harvard? Harvard researcher. Uh, <laughs> v and W is very <laughs> difficult for Norwegians, um, but he's a Harvard, doc Harvard uh, <laughs> doctor talking about aging, how to age slower, how to live healthy for a long time. Uh, uh, that book introduces fasting or intermittent fasting, which is something we, which means fasting for a shorter period of time uh, with the health in, in mind. Uh, so what we did so far is trying to explore this uh, a bit see how the bodies react uh, so for now we have one fixed day every week where we uh, don't eat breakfast or lunch to have more than 16 hours which is the threshold where the cells start renovating uh, they start uh, aging slower or, uh, so that's very 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 nice the third thing that happened last year which was also really great was that i uh, arrived at the end of a 12-year headache at uh, age 17, I was exercising a lot and not for the right uh, reasons, but for as with many teenagers for, for looking as strong as possible. And uh, maybe because of just that, I developed something called a strain triggered headache, which is a form of migraine that comes with heavy exercise, especially weights, etc. Uh, and I've had that headache for 12 years. 
However, in 2022, it became a lot better, uh, enabling me to actually return to exercising for the first time in 12 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was such a nice feeling. And I think it was such a healthy way of returning to exercising, now doing this only for the health benefits of my body. I wouldn't say not uh, caring about the looks, but trying to care less at least. And I started running. I got these shoes, these very beautiful pink shoes, and uh, they are connected to this app that shows where you've been. And that was something that uh, motivated me because I wanted to see it working on the app and you need to be running for it to be working. So <laughs> I started running. Also under heavy pressure from Tana, I started uh, a new skincare routine uh, and that involves wearing sunscreen even when it isn't sunny outside. Uh, but apparently the UV rays, they penetrate even the clouds. So now whenever I go out, I put on sunscreen and I also put on moisturizing cream before sleeping. And hopefully in a few years, I'll see the results of that. Second category is mindfulness, spirituality, etc. And the first thing that we learned from that category was we went to a meditation retreat. They asked us not to use our cell phones. So I decided not even to take it. I had it in the car, not having cell phone, not having anything like that. It was amazing. The second thing that they did there was that they suggested that we would adopt the practice of silence. So from 10 p.m. until 8 a.m., they suggest that we exercised silence. And this was so calming. This is something that I actually would like to practice a little bit more every day. And the third and final thing that really changed the way that we perceived and were acting in our own lives was the practice of meditation. They proposed a meditation three times a day, in the morning at 7 a.m. and then again at which time? At 12 and at 7 again. This actually led us to our second point, which was daily meditation. Third and last thing in the mindfulness list, cacao ceremony. I was invited by a very good friend of mine to join her in a ceremony led by her sister. It was a cacao ceremony. I had never been at a cacao ceremony. I didn't know exactly what to, what to expect. And the ceremony was incredible. It was magical for me. I felt completely in the moment, completely present. I was talking to people that were also in the ceremony and my mind was much more silent. Many times when we're talking to people, at least when I'm talking to people, I see that my mind is working. Sometimes I am analyzing a situation. I might be even judging, judging myself, judging others, judging the situation itself or being concerned about something else. And so I'm not 100% in the moment, but on that day, I was 100% in the moment, 100% there listening, and it was amazing. Yes, so I loved it. <laughs> and with this, we come to the category adventures. The first thing in our list is our return to Brazil. And it had to be in the list because it was simply amazing for me to be back where my roots are and also to be back this time with through my work and because of my work, that was really nice to be able to, to teach in the university, to be in the court as well, just amazing. And we were there at the time of the elections, which is the next point of the list, because the next point of the list is Lula was elected president. And here is a t-shirt that we got from the inauguration day, which says inauguration day, I was there. We were there. <laughs> in the first round of the election, I voted in Norway, and the second round, we were in Brasilia. Brasilia is generally a city that is more pro Bolsonaro. But I remember the day of the election, of the second round, we went to have breakfast with my friends, and then we went all together to our school, which was a place where we were gonna vote. There were so many stickers for democracy and uh, Lula and people were hunking to each other and there was just so much hope and my eyes, they were filled with tears. 
and then we watched all together a nerve-wracking vault counting and then to see that it was not just Lula winning it meant a democracy project winning and winning over a very authoritarian uh, form of government that denied science denied human rights so it was the return of hope this was really a huge highlight of last year another new adventure <laughs> for me was trying diving uh, which was uh, i thought it would be scary because of everything you're very dependent on the air and, and all of that uh, but it was so amazing that's also another way of entering into the very new world seeing things that you'd never seen before and the diversity of fish in the coral reefs in, in Brazil was really, really incredible. We saw uh, sea turtles. Uh, yeah, that was uh, very, very exciting. Uh, and another uh, much easier to fabricate at home, uh, but also another way of seeing the world anew, which was also something that last year brought to me, was this concept that we've named eco-mapping. Uh, and that arose when visiting Brazil the first time, living in the Atlantic rainforest with a garden with lots of natural trees, lots of birds, insects, etc. Uh, and then what I decided to do was to try to, because all of those species were completely new, so I wanted to map them to kind of build my own knowledge based off of the obs observations I made a bit like the first explorers. And that was such a nice experience because you get so connected to the earth around you. I was not able to eco-map the garden entirely because it was just too many species. But afterwards I've shortened this into a, a smaller context and for example tried to eco-map a single fence uh, mm -hmm. to see all the species of insects existing there, which you can see here. Uh, I've eco-mapped a small proportion of, of land, for example, in the rainforest, in a Norwegian roadside meadow, etc. And this really opens your eyes, uh, not just to the species around you, but also to the value of every single ecosystem. Then we go to an adventure called piercing. <laughs> I put a piercing in my nose. This was on the end of 2021, actually, but this has a lot to do with 2022. And why is this here? Well, I've always wanted to have a piercing. And I said, when I was 17, I said, okay, if I get to law school, if I get admitted, I'm gonna make a piercing, uh, do a piercing, I don't know. <laughs> and I got admitted, but I didn't do it. I just did it when I was 29. So it took more over 10 years. Yeah. It took 12 years for me to actually do it. And why is it here? Uh, what does it have uh, to do with sustainability in our lives, etc.? Well, the reason why I finally decided that I was going to do this was because we had planned on doing this walk, walking from my mom's house to another city called Belo Horizonte. My mother wanted to join us, but we got a, a bit of pushback from people who thought this was very dangerous for two women just with another man to do. And I got really sad because I, 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 I am a woman. If this means that I am refrained from doing adventures and things that for me were valuable, then I felt that I was in a trap and in a, in a gender trap, actually. And I got really frustrated and I started analyzing the traps that we find ourselves, the the identity traps and how the, wor the world imposes obstacles to us. And I started reanalyzing myself and I suddenly the person was in my head and this was something that I really wanted to do. But I wasn't because people were telling me that they didn't think that was the best idea. They were putting problems and showing obstacles. And for me, that was paralyzing me. And it was good when we were discussing possible obstacles so that we can have strategies to tackle them. But when the discussion of obstacles is just paralyzing us and putting us in this trap, then this is not necessarily good. And so I decided that in spite of Alan being against it. <laughs> As a minimalist, I thought it was necessary, but I think the reason behind it is pretty cool. And my mother also, she was a little bit afraid of uh, how it would be for me because I have uh, rhinitis, I don't, rhinitis. I don't know, my, I have allergy, <laughs> allergy to dust. 
and also it is it is new to her it was not something very very common in her environment so in spite of them being against it i decided that i would do it and i called my friend who was actually the same one who took me to the cacao ceremony and she was there with me she held my hand and we we were there together when i did the piercing and i continue to be really happy and this is a reminder of <laughs> me and my own choices so that's really good okay while being away on all of these adventures, we also decided to put our own apartment on Airbnb. Uh, and we were quite scared uh, at first because it's scary to have other people here. But it was such a good experience because this was, of course, it's nice to have an extra income when you have to rent a house somewhere else, etc. Uh, but it was also really nice just to, to be able to, yeah, to have find out that people are really nice they take really well care of the house and also in a way this connects a bit back to minimalism that we talk a lot about on this channel that to try to use the resources in a way that is sharing as much as possible uh, so it's also nice to that this house can be useful for someone uh, whenever we're not using it whenever we don't need it someone else can come in and, and use it so instead of having a lot of empty houses and having to build a lot of hotels and holiday apartments etc we can use these empty houses so it was quite quite nice and the next point <laughs> leads very well over from the fun of adventures to maybe the <laughs> reality of work uh, which is your point yes career uh last year was crazy to me we were in brazil then we came back and I went to North Macedonia and then Poland and then Norway and then Germany and then Norway and so on. <laughs> it, it got to a point in which I think I went to, I was in six different countries in six months. And this is not counting the back and forth because mm -hmm. Norway, I was here more than once. Germany, I was there more than once. In my life, when I was uh, a teenager, I would picture myself traveling to learn about human rights and different cultures and suddenly i was actually doing it and i found out that it's actually really tiring <laughs> it's not just glamorous and it's not just positive it can you need to find a balance and then the next point was embracing career uncertainty while it's very exciting that now I'm doing this PhD and there are so many opportunities. Oh, last year I went to Copenhagen as well. It was, it was crazy. Last year was crazy. But while last year there were a lot of opportunities, this year is the year where I finalized my PhD. So what comes next? I have no idea. And I think that in every transition we have to be prepared to, for, for a certain gap, for a void. And to be prepared so that we don't get in despair when this happens and we we have patience because we know that we've done we've built what we can build and sometimes we need to wait a little bit and to build a little bit more have no idea what's gonna happen after i finalize my phd have no idea which country i'm gonna go next but that can also be exciting again it's the mindset I can stress the obstacles and the doubts or I can focus more on the excitement of it, on the fact that all the possibilities are open and it's not always like this. And for me, I started a blog last year uh, and this was to get an outlet for things that I don't deal with so much in my normal job in an NGO working very much on social issues, migration, etc. But I really wanted to talk more about sustainability, nature, creative stuff. Uh, so the blog and also this YouTube channel was a really good outlet for that. Uh, and also what was very interesting is that in exploring issues of the world that are important to me, I also end up exploring myself a lot. And it's a really nice, nice way. And this blog and the YouTube channel is a way of putting some pressure and making sure I dedicate time to this. Uh, on a regular basis mm, and this takes us to point 18 which is getting serious on youtube alan was already serious i think from day one and she created our channel i was not like that <laughs> but in a moment of activism i started thinking about youtube as a channel to to discuss issues that were very dear to us 
And this leads us to our point 19, which is activism. When I was a teenager, I was very much involved in discussions in the school and university. I was in the Student Representatives Council. But with time, career took over and I got... And activism was more a thing that was inside me or in my discussions with my closest groups. And this year, I've started going back to or actually last year to doing this in a more organized form putting myself out there speaking up to in to a wider audience on things that i really care about if not we who if not now when okay with this we go to the last category which is self-development first point in self-development is non-violent communication during the peak of the covid pandemic we decided with our family from brazil to do this weekly meetings in which we discussed a topic to learn more about the world and be able to contribute more to our own lives and to society as a whole. And my mother had suggested a topic which was nonviolent communication. Nonviolent communication is basically a form of communication that is not guided by fear, guilt, or shame, but rather by compassion. This form of communication says that when we are having a discussion with others or analyzing our own behavior, we can be guided by compassion and not guided by guilt, fear, or, or shame. And this is very interesting. When we were doing the weekly meetings with my family, we, uh, we listened to this podcast that's in Spotify, that's called Nonviolent Communication, Marshall Rosenberg. Very nice, I highly suggest it. And uh, in the yoga retreat, we bought this book, which is Marshall's book called Nonviolent Communication. It's amazing. Yeah, on the topic of reading, I exchange uh, unhealthy uh, bedtime habits such as we're watching series, we're working very late, doing things that really uh, sets your, your, your thoughts spinning. And then I exchanged that for bedtime reading as the last activity of the day. Uh, and this was so great because it made me sleep much better, but it also enabled me to really, really find this time to return to reading, reading so many books, getting so many new perspectives, so much new knowledge. And um, we have a video here of the best books I read last year, uh, which are some really, really exciting books that I recommend. And the last uh, thing of uh, last year was that I had as my pandemic project to let my hair grow a bit like your piecing in a way it's something that I had thought about for a long time but put off always thinking it was too radical mm -hmm. uh, or people would think think I'm, I'm different strange it didn't really fit with my image of myself uh, but then I decided to let my hair grow and Although I, I started this in mid 2020, I would say it grew quite slowly. So you didn't really, I didn't feel like I had long hair until last year. So, so that's kind of when the results kicked in. Uh, and then, yeah, so now I think I can almost cut it because I, I've been talking about cutting it for a long time. But um, yeah, uh, but the curious thing is uh, that when I saved my hair for long hair i was always thinking oh, i would be so nice to have short hair again mm -hmm. uh, and then when i'm pretty sure that now that i've tried to have long hair when i cut it i will always uh, think back at the time when i had long hair so it's a bit um in a way that the the grass is always greener on the other side in a way and we can never be <laughs> truly happy so that's something that's quite interesting it was easier when I just had one hairstyle and that was it nothing else was even an option uh, so this leads a bit back to minimalism and maybe I'll do a video about this you should do a video on here because you have <laughs> here is politics and, and but, but don't get into that now let's let's get it now thanks for watching please let us know here whether Alan should keep his long hair <laughs> or go to short hair <laughs> and also share with us what were your things what did you learn in your prep towards a more sustainable life. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Bye. Bye bye.